Hello everyone. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. And in today's video, we are going to discuss about the interview questions that were asked in entity data. So without wasting much time, let us get started. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe guys. And let us thank a subscriber who has shared us his experience and questions so that it can be of help to all the viewers who are watching. So I encourage you all to share your experience and your interview questions so that it can be of some help to others who are watching. So the first question, like I always say, it was asked about, tell me about your project. So instead of, you know, tell me about yourself, which is pretty common and you will definitely get. Apart from that, it is about, tell me about your project. So now when, so like I always say, be prepared for this question, at least one to two projects you should definitely know. Like what you have, you have done in the project. Okay. And uh, what uh, kind of, charts have you implemented what was the dashboard design that you have created okay and what was the problem statement and how it helped you know the end user like the solution you are offering so these are something that you should be aware when you are creating a dashboard. So if you don't know the purpose of your dashboard, then you know we should definitely ask questions to our lead or our manager who are giving us tasks or assigning tasks to create dashboard. Like what is the purpose here? What is the problem statement that user is facing? That way you will get clarity and you will be more you know a solution oriented guy who is working on the problems so you will understand how your dashboard is helping end users that is something very important for a developer okay to grow up the ladder next is you know what are the most important project descriptions and challenges faced and what are... so again this is one generic question okay so what kind of project description and challenges were like mostly this is related to challenges that you have faced and the next question was kind of parameters again like here you know definitely there is a very high probability that we might use parameters in real time in our dashboard so you know be prepared or you know have uh, you know parameter scenarios in your mind definitely they will ask you how or what kind of parameters you have created be it for your ytd calculations or selecting something from parameter uh, like that but you need to be you need to have at least four to five scenarios ready so that whenever the situation comes you are talking about the parameters here okay so uh, please comment in the comment section if at all you want me to create a video on the parameters explaining the concepts and the scenarios next is what is dual axis and blended axis so this is one very you know uh, interesting question that will confuse many of the users so i thought of let us let me show you that so <clears throat> let us go with the name only dual means two axes right so remember this word that's it dual act dual means two if i take category here and uh, i'm taking my sales here and i'm dropping it here so this is a standard you know axis that is there for our sales but now if I am taking my second measure and I'm just dropping it on the right side here, what is happening here? It is creating two axes here. If you observe one is for sales and another one is for profit. This is your dual axis concept, which means two axes. Now what I'm doing is I'm just taking my profit and I'm dropping it here only. Now what is happening? This is a single axis. If you observe in this single axis, we are trying to show information for profit and sales. So, which means our axis is actually blended. This is called as a blended axis. Very small difference, but you need to understand how we can create. One, one I'm dropping and creating a separate axis. One, I'm merging or creating a, a common axis to both of my measures. So, that is your blended axis. So, you can talk about this whenever you are getting 
uh, this type of question. And when it comes to properties, you can in dual access, you can talk about how we can, you know, have uh, independent properties for each of them, how we can handle each of them. Maybe one for uh, for one chart, I can have bar and for another, I can have circle or line chart like that. So dual access is more customizable that you can talk here in properties or the question. Next is what are parameter actions? So I think this was, you know, uh, the latest type of actions that were, you know, added to the list of actions that we have that is parameter actions and set actions. So simple like how you are passing a value to your parameter through your actions, simple. So you can talk about that, how you have implemented parameter actions in real time, okay? But like say here, if you see two questions were related to parameters only. One is uh, how you have used or your parameter concept and next was related to your parameter actions. So this is parameter action is mostly through actions that is applied. Next is what is assumed referential integrity and cardinality. Two important and theoretical question that again, it confuses many. Assume referential integrity means here you are telling a tableau that for every record that is available, there is a possible record that is available on the other side. So that is assuming referential integrity. Cardinality means here we need to understand some uh, the relationship type that it is like is it one to one or is it one to many or is it many to one like that. So for one person there is only one other card. This is one to one, one to one relationship, right? Similarly, like one car will have only one uh, RC number or engine number. Okay, but one car can have uh like say multiple you know uh drivers or passengers so that is a one to many relationship so this type of relationship you need to understand when it comes to cardinality it is how your relationship is built is it one to many or many to one or like that so one employee will have one manager only right but one manager can have multiple employers under him. That is one very simple example that you can remember. That is one to many and many to one. Next is how to create a reference line with a user filter. Okay. So I think again for this, what we can do is I'm just putting it like this. And uh, if at all we want to add a reference line, you can simply go and add it here. But here now see here sum of sales average and I want this to be controlled by a user filter mostly like parameter. I can create a parameter from here and maybe uh, enter a value. So click OK and OK. So if I go to parameter section, show parameter. This is something that is visible to the end user. I can pass some value. And you see this value is going. So this is how we can pass uh, a value to your reference line. So next is some question related to how to add grand totals to a stacked bar, which can easily be converted into cross tab report. So what we can uh, do here is stacked bar okay so first let us create one stacked bar chart so i'm taking category here again and i'm taking my sales okay maybe i'll just put it like this and uh, maybe entire view and i want to add region to my color so this is your standard uh, you know stacked bar report but i want to add uh, so this is my total sales Okay, now for each region, what is the sales it is showing? I can do it uh, through reference line concept where I want to do it per cell. Now see, I'm getting a value here. So I'm getting some here and the label is value. Okay. Now you see, this is how I can add a total to my stack to bar chart. Okay, so if I try to duplicate as cross tab this is how we are getting 
and it can be easily converted into cross tab. How to remove negative values? We can use absolute function to remove negative. Okay. So next is LODs. So when it comes to LODs, it is actually a very big topic. You can talk about uh, what is LOD, how many types are there. And if at all you have used anything in your project, then you need to talk about that. So I think I have already created a video on LOD. Maybe you can refer to this. It will definitely help you. And you can talk about the scenarios that we have mentioned in our channel. So there are a lot of LOD scenarios that we have created. Now, next is uh, there was one SQL question that was asked. What is drop, delete and you know, date trunk? So <clears throat> dropping is like, you know, completely uh, dropping table from the database. Whereas deleting is always, you know, works. If you tell you want to delete a specific record from the table, then it is delete. Like mostly it is like delete. Uh, from table name where column name like let's like say where department number is equal to 20 so what are we doing here we are deleting record from a table where department number is equal to 20 so only the conditional based data we are deleting here okay so next also we have delete drop and you know truncate also we have truncating means again deleting the data but but you are keeping the deleting the data but keeping the structure of table as is that is the difference here so remember these three questions drop delete and truncate very important and one of the most commonly asked questions in sql date trunk means that to which part of the day you are actually truncating that is important here okay so if i go to tableau here maybe to show you a very clearly i'm going to take order date and i'm just truncating at exact date and i'll just make it discrete now i'm just truncating here and i'm writing it as a date trunk so date trunk so when you are adding a date trunk function, always remember to which part of the date are you actually truncating. Like say I'm doing it month level. Okay. Comma of order date simple. I'm adding it apply. Okay. And I'm just dragging and dropping here. Let us observe how we will get value so that we can work on that. I'm making it discrete. Now see here, no matter to which in which part of the month you are until 31st of January, if you take here, it is only printing or truncating to first day of the month. Take it again, February here, no matter in which part of the day of that particular month I am, it is truncating to first day of the month like that so it works like that so it, it will truncate to the first day of the week suppose if you are giving week then it will truncate to the first day of the week no matter in which week you are basing on how your week is starting is it starting at sunday or saturday or monday it will truncate to that specific part so even if i am on monday thursday or whatever so these are the dates that you will get 5 12 19 26 that is how it works that is a date trunk function okay so i think that's it from my side in this video i hope this video helped you with something new if it does don't forget to like share and subscribe and see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day and all the best for your preparation